Hi, I'm Nidge, and if I was a cloud, I'd be a cumulonimbus. <laughs> How many times have you checked the weather and then walked outside to be greeted by this? <laughs> Surely we're smart enough now to be able to predict the weather, right? <laughs> uh, we can put people on the moon and predict complex movements of the solar system, but are still unable to say what the weather's going to be like next Tuesday. <laughs> So why is it so hard to predict the weather perfectly? How does weather prediction even work? <laughs> that last one is unnecessary. <laughs> Come out. <laughs> right, so weather is actually amazingly complicated to predict. It's even harder than predicting the climate. What's the difference between weather and climate? Well, meteorologists say to stick your head out of the window for an hour, that's the weather. Stick it out there for a month, that's the climate. To predict the weather over the next few hours through to the next few days, Meteorologists don't just use one set of readings and give it a crack. They compile atmospheric conditions from around the world over a number of days, keeping an eye out for changes in pressure and temperature and rainfall and wind speed. They send weather balloons into the sky and take weather readings from aircrafts and ships and monitor cloud patterns with satellite imagery. They're also assisted by historical readings in impressive numerical modelling that simulates how air, moisture and heat all flow over the Earth's surface. People have been predicting the weather for millennia. And some of the sayings that have made it into folklore have solid basis in science. Red sky at night, sailors take delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning, refers to the positions of clouds at sunrise and sunset, and the fact that weather systems generally travel west to east at mid-latitudes. A ring around the sun or moon means that rain will come and soon, tells of ice crystals in the upper atmosphere, which are often an indicator of an approaching low pressure front. If the clouds move against the wind, rain will soon follow, references wind shear, which is instability between the upper and lower parts of the atmosphere, and a good predictor of rain. <laughs> but just how accurate are forecasts for letting us know if we should be packing some sunscreen or an umbrella? Getting weather predictions wrong can be a big problem. We rely on them to coordinate airports and farming and to keep an eye on potentially deadly weather events. But often in weather, chaos reigns. You might have heard the saying that a butterfly flapping its wings can create a cyclone on the other side of the planet. And it's certainly true. I read a kid's book about it. It's because of a branch of physics and maths called chaos theory, which looks at complex systems and how they are very sensitive to initial conditions. A way of demonstrating chaos theory is with a pendulum. If I let this single pendulum drop, its behaviour is very predictable. But if I increase the complexity of the system by adding a second arm to make a double pendulum, its behaviour suddenly becomes very difficult to predict. With tiny changes in initial conditions, how I push the pendulum at the start, leading to very different outcomes at a later time. Scientists have found this sensitivity to initial conditions and resulting chaotic behaviour in many aspects of our lives, from prices on the stock market, to fluctuating animal populations, to fractal shapes like the one on my shirt. And of course, with something as complex as the weather. So with that in mind, how accurately can we expect to predict the weather? Are we getting better at understanding complex systems like the weather? Well, yes, there's two aspects. First of all, we can do better forecasts, but that's mainly due to faster computers and also more observational data, which is probably the main reason why we have a better forecast now. But we also have to sort of develop better methods to deal with, you know, not, not having enough data and um, integrating the equations that, that will give us uh, the, the forecast. So if you want to solve this system, then you have to discretize your space. You can't solve the temperature everywhere. You have to decide you can solve it at certain discrete points and only at certain discrete times. So examples are high and low pressure fields. I mean, now we can actually do pretty good prediction, like we can now do three days pretty well. Then El Nino is another, another large-scale structure that we can treat in some sense on, on a certain time scales predictable. Of course, on much longer time scales, also the instability of those systems will prevent any, any prediction. So perfect long range weather forecasts will likely never happen, though we are getting more accurate with our predictions every year. And maybe we like a little bit of randomness in our day anyway. <laughs> Seriously? Is this like a wet t-shirt competition? Woo! <laughs>